I still like Gilead. Keep an eye on Gilead, guys, for the next few days. If it could just reclaim the 60... Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody's doing great. Um, look, the big story today after the close, uh, Microsoft continuing its uh, just great, great tenure in the market, being one of the market leaders, uh, always a driving force, one of the greatest companies of all time. That's fantastic. It's kind of building on what Netflix did uh, last week. Um, AMD, not a horrible quarter, you know, down a little bit uh, after the close. Uh, Starbucks, which again, puts a really warm and fuzzy place in my heart. Unfortunately, trading a little bit lower. The, the big story tonight and continues to be uh, is GameStop. And, you know, I, I really want to say this, you know, from the bottom of my heart, okay? Everybody knows retail is always the last one, right? They're always the last one. Uh, they always get duped, whether it's uh, analyst recommendations, uh, whether they're chasing stocks, whatever the case may be. And everybody gives them a hard time, right? Everybody's guilty of it. I don't think anybody's not. Everything is, everybody's very, very guilty of it, okay? And the moral of the story is they take a lot of crap from everybody. But once in a while, you know, when David goes against Goliath, it's really nice to see David win once in a while. And that's exactly what's happening here on GameStop. Uh, as much as we joked around when the stock went, you know, to, to $40 and to $60 and to $100, how can somebody buy this $100? Well, are they out of their minds? They're going crazy. How can they do this? It's really nice to see the retail investor actually win, okay? Um, and this is something that if you are smart with your money, this really is something that could really set you up for the rest of your life. It's very, very rare that, you know, you can buy a stock, for example, at 20, 30, $40 a share, still ride it and watch the stock go to $240 a share within three, four days. And before everybody starts talking about how, oh my God, the hedge funds are blowing up. Well, nobody told them to short this damn thing, right? And nobody told them to go parade themselves like, like, like idiots all over social media telling everybody how the stock should go to zero, right? And compounding the losses by getting more and more arrogant and more and more smug. So before everybody starts talking about, let's, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's hold a moment of silence for these hedge funds who are shorting this thing, who cares about them, right? It doesn't make a difference. With all this stuff that's been going on, with COVID and people losing their jobs and people losing uh, their loved ones and so forth and so on. This is really a gift from God. This is an absolute blessing that if you are a participant in what, what is truly a historical moment, and I don't think anybody can really uh, argue against it, um, then you should really figure out now what to do for the rest of your life. Because again, if you've been praying to God and you lost your business, right? And you had to shut down and all this stuff and you got this incredible blessing. Your next order of business is not to buy a new car. Your next order of business is to set your family up for God forbid for the next phase of your life and pay your taxes, buy some real estate, investment properties, whatever the case may be. But this is God giving you what you've prayed for. Okay. Your job now is to kind of run with it. And it really is amazing that so many people have literally changed their lives and you can make it and you can joke around or whatever the case may be. You know, they're buying their eight shares and 12 shares and a hundred shares. Well, some people are investing 10, 20, 30, $40,000 and coming out with a couple million dollars after all this is said and done. And I think this is a wonderful thing. So, um, you know, not many times, uh, David beats Goliath. Uh, and again, you saw today a lot of really weird tweets coming from, Big investor personalities, uh, the Elon Musk of the world, uh, one of the Winklevoss brothers talking about, quote unquote, should I buy some stock at 100, right? All joking around, even the, the owner of uh, even the owner uh, of the Golden State Warner, uh, Warriors and had that whole big move uh, with the SPAC names. 
uh, it felt a little personal, right? It, it really did see, you know, watching all these major uh, personalities comment on a stock that they never would have been commenting on before. So it did feel a little personal, but at the end of the day, the good guys won, the little guys won, the retail investors won. Congratulations, guy. And I, I, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, I, I can't be any happier for the retail public. I, I didn't touch this thing. I couldn't care less about it. It's not really my thing. But for all you guys, God bless yourself, your families, and may God continue to bless you guys in the future with health uh, and happiness. Other than that, other than that, right? Uh, market today was very, uh, very strong. EV names uh, were the theme. They were the strength. Uh, they were the drug of choice. Uh, and what I liked about today's session compared to like yesterday or the day before, even though there's some good value and continues to be good values for different days, what I like about today's session was very muted and it was very organic and it was very orderly and there wasn't a lot of blips on the radar and the futures didn't go up and down, up and down, up and down. It was a very straightforward day. Uh, the pivots were very, very aggressive. The after hours, some trading uh, with TTOO and PBI with some really good moves uh, afterwards. So the, the bull market lives, the euphoria continues, but not every single day uh, is exactly uh, how you see it, right? Uh, today was one of those days that were boring, organic, and that's a good thing. And that's exactly what we want every single day. It's kind of like controlled controlled chaos, right? A lot of controlled chaos, a lot of con controlled aggression. And if you look at the pivots today, and again, there's nothing really, there's nothing really to break down, I mean, right? There's really nothing to break down technically. Market's good, right? Until the market uh, becomes bad and until there's a reason for the slowdown, uh, whether it's an earnings catalyst, whether it's another disease that pops up, a pandemic, whatever the case may be, uh, the market is going to uh, continue uh, to be very, very strong. And like I said, every single day, the key is not to buy the stocks off the top, unless it's GME, of course, sarcasm, right? Uh, but the, the goal every single day is to make sure you're finding value, you're waiting for the setups, option flow is definitely helping, okay? Uh, and the most important thing is strike with extreme prejudice because again, technical analysis works very, very well and it's very, very important to kind of really embrace it. So if you look at today's session, uh, pretty good stuff indeed. Uh, so RKT was my number one watch today. And I was so disappointed that this thing, you know, didn't come close to the $24 level. We've been watching this thing now for months and we knew how important, uh, we really knew how important this uh, $24 level was. If you look at the weekly chart, and we started talking about this last night in the video, I really got rejected three times uh, off 24. So this was actually my number one watch for the day that never triggered, uh, which I was very, very surprised. But if you start looking, uh, things got very, very aggressive. Uh, Momo didn't do anything yet, but I still like the chart. Uh, 1680, 17. Uh, this is the highest close in this whole formation, right? This whole highest close. This is a weekly view. So I still like it. it closed around that 17 area. I think if today's price action confirms, you can still get higher prices, some pretty decent uh, option flow in the name as well. So I still like it for higher prices. It just didn't do anything uh, today. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Gilead never got to uh, the 68.50 level. I think it traded like 68.30s. I still like Gilead. Keep an eye on Gilead, guys, for the next few days. If it could just reclaim the 68.50 level, I, I think there will be a higher price. So definitely keep an eye on Gilead. Uh, AI never got to the 152 area. Wolf, I still like. Uh, Wolf 2760 needs to build. Um, it got above the 28, it got above the 2760. It went to $28. That's it, right? So I'd like to see this thing clean out this whole channel here uh, to get a really, really big aggressive move. But so far, so good. Nice little move. Uh, starts remounting that 36, excuse me, that 28, uh, 28, 20 level. I think you're going to see uh, higher prices as well. Uh, MAC, we started watching this thing. Uh, very, very good move. This was uh, another SPAC, another SPAC name. Uh, $12 rejected tw uh, twice. Uh, needs to build. Here was MAC, MCAC, right? It took out the 12, it took out the 1267, uh, traded all the way up to the 1324 level. Still looks really, really good. Congratulations for all you guys 
who are still holding that. Uh, DVAX never got to the 660, 670 level. AACQ uh, never got to the 131130 area. Uh, you can see your 1267 uh, new highs. It went all the way up to uh, 1320s. Uh, Amazon, a big, big spike after the close. But here is the sneaky pivot. Obviously, uh, they are going to report earnings shortly. Uh, big 3300, 3400, 3500, 3600 call buyers. Uh, coming in, would love to see a split announce on this thing uh, just to make it more tradable, just for kind of for everybody to provide a little more liquidity. But Amazon 3316 needs to build. I know some of you guys are still long uh, on the run up uh, into earnings. So here is the 3316, right? Here is the 3316, almost traded to $34, uh, 3400 th th after the close. So uh, big, big move. Congratulations to all you guys are still holding that. Uh, NVIDIA obviously never got up here as well. Uh, Nikolai it was so weird. This is my first, this was actually my first trade of the day of all things. Again, the SPAC theme, uh, excuse me, the EV thing uh, woke up, right? Biden's comments and they all started lighting up. Uh, NKLA, we started watching $25 call buyers coming in for the weeklies. Uh, 23 needs to build. Nice move on NKLA. Uh, again, all the dog crap in the world. Uh, here is the sneaky pivot right over here off this 23 level and went almost to 26 bucks. I mean, really, really strong move on NKLA. Uh, big move, like really, really big move here. Uh, VLDR was nothing big there. Uh, I think I actually bought it a little late. I caught it for a little bit of a cash flow trade, but nothing, nothing really big there. Uh, only ran up like 20 cents or so, nothing big at all. And it stopped out break even on the balance. Uh, FUV continuing with uh, the EV theme, 2390, 24 uh, needs to build. So here was FUV, right? So 2390, 24 went to 25 and a half. It was strong, very, very strong. It, today, you could, you could really isolate, uh, very, very quickly isolate the strong names and the themes. Uh, CLOV, 15 needs to build, rejected a 14.95 uh, twice. Here was CLOV, right? Took out uh, this 1495 dollars $15 area, almost went to 16 I still like it. I think if this thing starts uh, getting above the $16 area, I think it could go more. So definitely, definitely... Uh, keep an eye, but nice move, beautiful move on CLOV, had a little bit of internet problems, uh, and um, I think that's about it, uh, 13 on deck, uh, and here is a couple of moves here after the close, uh, yeah, so I traded this beautiful move on TTOV, uh, TTOO, $3 potential after hour play, it had a 10% spike after the close, really, really nice move, uh, and, then, and then they got it lower. Right, and then they got it lower. This is why you always take money on the way up. So here is the, you know, here is the three dollar. Here is, excuse me, here is the two ninety. Here it is, right here. Here is a three dollar spike after the close, went to three forties, uh, and here is another after hour play I put in there as well. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, Boxel. I'm still watching. PB, PBI. Um, you know, thirteen sixty five, thirteen seventy five potential after hours play. Uh, here was PBI. So there's still, I mean, people are still chasing. This thing went all the way uh, to $15. So listen, the market is still good. I'm still very, very cautious. I, I refuse, uh, you know, I, I just refuse to buy overextended names. Uh, anything that I'm watching for tomorrow is channels coming out of the, you know, coming out of the balance. Um, Netflix, I, I think might wake up in the next day or so. I, I want to watch it. Maybe not tomorrow, but we started watching again. Uh, they were coming in for the 15, uh, 575 weeklies, 590 weeklies. If Netflix could get, just get above this whole channel here, maybe it finally does wake up. I, I have to assume it was just not a one day wonder with their earnings that again, it will wake up. So we'll see. We'll see. We, we don't anticipate. We'll see exactly uh, what happens with that one as well. So guys, have a great night, everybody. All jokes aside, some of you guys are incredibly blessed this evening. Continue to blessings. More important than money is happiness and health. And with God's, you know, God's guidance and your belief, uh, you will continue to shine. Guys, God bless. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.